Hello, I'm Stephanie Ricca with Hotel News Now, and I'm here today with Red Roof Inn's Phil Hugh and Andy Alexander. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Red Roof Inn has had a big year this year, your 400th hotel opening. Talk a little bit about your domestic growth plans here in the U.S. Andy, start us off. Well, sure. I mean, we have a lot of room to grow. Uh, just at the end of 2013, we had 357 properties. Uh, we're over 425 now. That's a 20% growth in just 18 months. Uh, most of it's attributed to Phil joining the brand right at the same time and, and really spurred on that growth. Really targeted. It's an exciting time for the brand. Talk a little bit more about that pipeline here. What cities are you looking at? Are there any places where you aren't yet that you'd like to be? Well, there's a lot of places we're not. Uh, the brand has a lot of runway, especially west of the Mississippi. So we're really focusing on you know California, Washington, Oregon, the mountain states. We've just got a lot of opportunity there. But with only 425 properties, it allows uh, massive growth throughout the East Coast as well. So we're staffed pretty heavily throughout the country. And you know conversations are ongoing in every major market but you know I think in 2016 as we as we head there I'd like to see us do more center city locations get into Manhattan uh, Los Angeles uh, Seattle uh, some of these larger cities downtown we have great representation in Chicago which is a good example of what the product can do but we, we need to see some expansion to our, into some of the major metropolitan areas like you've said it's been a great year here in the states for Red Roof Inn. But let's talk a little bit about international growth and expansion. Mm -hmm. You've had three major deals, really, that have been cooking and some opening over the last year or so. Tell me what excites you the most about Brazil, Thailand, Canada, and fill me in on some of those deals. Well, I'll let Phil give you the details, but what excites me the most is the partnerships we've created. Um, we have three phenomenal partners, and we wouldn't be in any of those countries if we didn't have the partner. Our goal was not to be in Thailand, to be in Brazil. It was when we find the right partners internationally to, to embrace that and work with them to, to, get, to, the, the, to get success. It's been uh, the partnership. That's exactly what I was going to say, the partnerships. Uh, Glenn Squires with... Uh, with Pacrim, uh, known for uh, many years, and you know he's a visionary. He understands the Canadian marketplace. Understood that there is a product that's lacking or missing from the landscape there, and he's been very strategic in his approach. We'll, we'll start uh, construction uh, by the end of the year if the weather cooperates, and uh, I think we'll see some massive growth there in 2016 and steady growth because he's been very strategic. Uh, he works very closely with us with our design and construction team to understand what the product's going to be, and you know if we have to adjust things for certain nuances within Canada or Thailand or, or Brazil at this point will do so. Uh, you're moving south to Brazil, uh, Roberto Bertino with Nobilia, just wonderful man, understands the industry. They're the fourth largest management slash ownership company there. Uh, they too saw a lacking for a, for a consistent product and when they came to the U.S. to find a brand, we were the most consistent they could see in that segment. So they've opened in Curitiba. Um, we've got five or six other applications in process right now. So, you know, moving quite nicely in Brazil. And then finally, Paragon with uh, Swin and Raj uh, in, in, um, in, in Thailand. I was going to Singapore, but in Thailand, uh, they really have a great strategy. They control their sites. Uh, they are working on their prototype now because pet friendly in the U.S. is a little different than pet friendly in, in Bangkok. So we're working through our brand standards to make sure that we're delivering a product that works uh, within that country. So really, really great strategic planning by our partners. Uh, they're embracing our teams and what we want to accomplish with the brand. So to a point, I thought we were a little opportunistic. It's not you know, greater growth than we've had so far. Industry-wide, do you foresee any concerns or do you think that everyone will enjoy as healthy mm. and profitable times as, as they did this year? I will say that the, uh, I haven't seen STAR's most recent, uh, uh, I guess, what they see for the forecast for 2016. Um, PKF came out over 7%. 
I, I think we're going to see a little bit of a slowing in that, not to the extent that that it's going to be a, a, a negative to the industry, but if September and August were, were a sign of things to come, and obviously October and the rest of the year I think have picked up a bit, uh, but that would be a pretty strong number if we hit seven. We hit seven percent. Our occupancy is higher than it's ever been, or at least since the '70s, um, and our rate is higher than it's ever been. And um, at some point in time here, all the international uh, news and and that's weighing on the economy, I think will take cause some people to take pause. Uh, and I, I fortunately, I think that our growth has been slow enough that we're not going to reach a wall here, but I think to expect a little bit more moderate growth in the five, five and a half percent range is probably where we're at for 16.